The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and ordered him and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. <clears throat> Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even louder, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So, throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. <clears throat> then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Behavioral scientist. Behavioral scientist study human capabilities and human experiences. Behavioral scientists study the optimum levels of human performance. And behavioral scientists study the extreme limitations of human performances. They look at the elements and the environments that will promote success. And they look at the elements and environments that will limit human success. And there have been several recent studies that have located a single characteristic as the best predictor of human success. The single characteristic as the best predictor for human success. And human success defined as and measured as Self-actualization, the ability for human beings to create, sustain, nurture good, healthy relationships, to create a community of connections for themselves. Human success as a way of finding and sustaining productive means of supporting themselves, creating a good life for themselves, getting their basic needs met. Human success as the ability to create good relationships, find work that engages their spirit and their mind and provide for themselves, which leads to increased self-esteem, a sense of self-worth, which leads to a sense of when you feel good about yourself, it is much easier to find empathy for other peoples. These are the measures of human success. As I was reading these studies, I was thinking, what could that best predictor possibly be? And I thought, well, maybe it's IQ. Maybe it's basic intelligence, that you have to have a baseline level of intelligence to understand how the world works and your own self in that world and navigate. Just basic human intelligence is how one 
finds oneself um, a successful human being. But no, it's not IQ. So I thought, okay, so maybe it's EQ. Maybe it's emotional intelligence, that social intelligence by, whereby you can navigate the world because you understand your own self, your own stresses, your own triggers, and those of other human beings. The reason why the, they're reacting to me in this way is because this is going on in their life. I'm reading their cues. No, it's not social intelligence. And I thought, oh, wouldn't it be fabulous? Wouldn't it be fabulous if it were empathy? Because that will really preach. <laughs> if the single predictor for human success was empathy, the ability to walk in another person's shoes to understand what was going on in their lives, oh, forgiveness would come so much easier. It would just be a wonderful thing. No, brothers and sisters, it wasn't empathy. <laughs> and I thought, well, Please, Lord, let me not read further and find out that it's deviousness. <laughs> right? right? The ability to understand the world is a dangerous and shifting place, and the way to have human success is to sort of figure out how to outmaneuver. It wasn't deviousness. <laughs> no. The answer, the single best predictor for human success, for human self-actualization, for the ability to create good, healthy relationships, for the way, the predictor for finding a way to uh, into productivity and feeling self-worth and, and, and be able to create a life that will satisfy your basic needs. That single predictor is resiliency. Resiliency, perseverance. Moving ahead in the face of disappointment, moving ahead in the face of hardship, moving ahead in the face of disaster and failure, resiliency and perseverance. Which leads to the question, from whence comes resiliency? Well, what the behavioral scientists have found to be true and probably what you know in your own lives is this. As with most characteristics, there is a continuum. And some people came out of the womb into the world with uber resiliency. <laughs> they were just lucky enough that was woven into their being from the foundations of the earth. They are super resilient. resilient. And some of us poor souls came into this world with our D.S. Resiliency Deficiency Syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> we just don't have it. Some of us have much, some have milled, some have a little bit. But the good news is this. The good news is this, is that you don't have to be born with it. Resiliency and perseverance is a characteristic that can be acquired, can be nurtured, can be grown. And how, does this, how is this accomplished? How does one acquire resiliency? There seems to be three ways. One of those is through magic thinking. Entering the world thinking, oh, it is a good, safe place, and with sort of pixie dust and tinkerbell kind of, we'll rub, put our hands together and rub and things will turn out right. And this type of resiliency is really effective as long as a positive outcome comes quickly. Mm -hmm. As long as the suffering is mitigated pretty quickly, it will work until the next time. And then it better work quickly again. Yeah. <laughs> Second way one can acquire and nurture and grow resiliency is to locate within oneself the idea that by my own means, and with my own force of will and the character I already have, I can surmount this pain, this disappointment, this failure. The sort of pulling oneself up by one's own bootstraps idea. And this too will be effective. This too will encourage resiliency in those situations over which one has control of the disappointment and the failure. So supposing someone wanted to make the basketball team and tried out and found out they were cut or they never made the team, this kind of resiliency could be put to use by saying, okay, I'm gonna go practice my 
my dribbling, and I'm going to go practice my foul shooting, and I'm going to get better, I'm going to get better, and then I'm going to try out again. Or maybe one says, you know, I'm probably never going to be good enough for that team. What I'm going to do is I'm going to locate a team that's not quite so competitive. Right? That kind of resiliency, hard work, and redoubling one's efforts will work in those kind of situations over which one has some level of control. And then the third type of resiliency is when one has confidence in a higher power. When one has confidence in a higher power, in a God who has influence and commitment and brings out order over chaos, brings out good over evil, when one has confidence that maybe not moment to moment in our individual lives, but on the overall, there is a God, a higher power invested in making sure that in the overall, the overall good will prevail. Confidence in God, in this how higher power, in this power active and moving in the world, leads to sustainable resiliency. Confidence in God, in something greater than ourselves, at work, prospering good in the overall, leads to resiliency. We see that today in our gospel lesson with Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus is a blind man in a time it is very difficult to be blind. Right? Bartimaeus is blind at a time when there are no guide dogs and there are no disability checks and there's not a safety net. Bartimaeus cannot see to sow seed. Bartimaeus cannot see to herd sheep. Bartimaeus cannot see to make change in the marketplace. Bartimaeus has no way to look after himself outside of begging. And so Bartimaeus has a cloak that he puts on the ground and he sets himself on a busy street and he begs for coins. And at the end of the day, he gathers, he feels, and he gathers those coins up in his cloak, ties them up, and goes and buys his bread for the night. And that's his life. And I can't imagine it's anything but constant anxiety. Will today be a day that I have enough? And that's his life, day after day after day. And on this particular day, on the busy road from closer to uh, Jerusalem, from Jericho to Jerusalem, Bartimaeus has out his cloak, and he hears that Jesus is coming. And Bartimaeus says, there is a possibility. There is a possibility that tomorrow could be better than today. There is a possibility that something could happen to me, that God could intervene and my life could be better tomorrow than it is today. There is a possibility because there is a God active in the world and I am going to grab that possibility. So, Bartimaeus says loudly, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on him. And the crowd says, shh, shh. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy that inserts himself into this gathering. Don't be that guy that is such a distraction. Don't be that guy that, that disrupts what we're feeling and our hearing and our movement. Don't be that guy. Be quiet. And Bartimaeus says, no, no. This is the possibility. It is in front of me now. There is a powerful God operating in the world, and I am going to take advantage of his grace, his mercy, the possibility that my life can be different. And so he doesn't get quiet, and he doesn't wait, and he grabs on to that possibility. He has confidence. He has confidence, and he's persistent. And he says, this is what I won't want. Be present to me. And Jesus responds. And Jesus responds. And his life changes. And his life changes. 
brothers and sisters, details and stories are not throwaway. Barton Mayus gets up and throws off his cloak. Do we understand what that means? That cloak is Barton Mayus's shelter. It's what keeps him warm. It's how he wraps himself up. It's how he gathers his coins. What happens? What happens if that possibility is not realized? At the end of that, if he remains blind, he's not going to be able to go back and find his cloak. He's not going to be able to gather up his coins. Bartimaeus is all in. He is all in. <coughs> Jesus. Son of David, have mercy. There's this possibility, and I'm going for it. Resiliency. Perseverance. The singular, singular, singular best predictor of human success and human experience. So how do we find that, and how do we access that, that resiliency, that confidence in God? It's like a, it's like a cycle. It's like this, this confidence in God is the yeast. Stepping out in faith, stepping out in faith, having this confidence builds our resiliency. Our resiliency makes us able to take one step after another into that new life. There is the positive outcome. The positive outcome says, oh, this is the result of God's grace, God's mercy, God's connection, God's power in the world, which increases our confidence in God having control and interest and order over chaos and good over evil. And having that confidence gives us confidence to step out again. The heartache and the tragedy of those without resiliency is known to us. You will remember the story of the two sisters in New Orleans. The two sisters, when Katrina came, they both lost their homes. Both lost their homes and everything in their homes. And one sister was able to say, this was the home of my dreams. I raised my children here. It was just the way I liked it. It's just the way I loved it. I had friendships here. This home meant so much to me. It, I had so many good memories. It's never coming back. I will probably have to go live in a much smaller place. It's never coming back. But I am so grateful for what I had here. And I will see what my new life brings. And day after day, she got up. And she put her things in order, and she went out, and she opened herself up to new possibilities. And she formed new friendships. She helped other people regain their footing. And she's leading a full, good life. And her sister, her sister was never able to do that. Day after day, she woke up, and she said, how could God have done this to me? I had it all. I had this wonderful home. I had this friendship. I had this community, and it's all gone. Where is God in this? And day after day, she cried and she grieved, and her world got smaller and smaller and smaller. And to this day, it is the same. She couldn't locate confidence in God's purview. She couldn't be resilient. She couldn't persevere. And it's heartbreaking, and it's a tragedy. And the same is for those that get stuck and can't move on. Resiliency is the key. Connecting with the author of all possibilities is the key. Barton Mayus knew that, and our psalmist knows that. I sought the Lord... And he answered me and delivered me out of my terror. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from my troubles. Taste and see 
taste and see that the Lord is good, happy are they who trust in him. In a few moments, in a few moments, we're going to bring Hannah into the household of God. We're going to bring her into the knowledge of a God who brings order out of chaos, prospers good over evil, has his view on the overall. In a few moments, we're going to bring her into the households of God and into the knowledge of such a God. And after that, as a community, we will help Hannah recognize, recognize over and over again and help her connect with the author of all that is good and the author of all possibilities. We will help Hannah and we will help one another. Whether we came into this world with uber resilience or a little deficit, together we will locate it. So Hannah, let's come make you the newest Christian. Yeah. <laughs>